In this segment of our introductory lecture, we discuss agency problem and corporate governance. In finance, we identify two key agency relationships out of which agency problem arises. The first is agency relationship between managers and stockholders, and the second is agency relationship between stockholders and the debt holders. Now typically this agency relationship between stockholders and debt holders by proxy is between managers and the debt holders since managers represent stockholders within the firm. Now in general agency problem exists within the firm when the management of the company does not act in the best interest of the stakeholders. Now typically this key stakeholder obviously would be the stockholders. And so the agency relationship between managers and stockholders is the pivotal relationship that engenders the type of agency problem that is often um, discussed in, in the um, in corporate um, situations. And the reason is as follows. The firm it represents um, an investment made by stockholders who are the owners and so the stockholders as owners hire managers who um, based on the nature of that relationship become their agents. So the manager is the agent of the stockholder and as an agent of the stockholder the manager um, the manager is expected to perform fiduciary duties uh, on behalf of the stockholders. As a fiduciary, uh, the manager is expected to manage to run the affairs of the firm as a reasonable person would um, run his or her own affairs. Therefore, whenever there is a breach in that fiduciary responsibility, it means that managers have not acted in the best interest of stockholders. That is a problem, and that problem carries a cost because it means that managers are no more running the firm in a value maximizing way. Now the basis to this type of problem as is discussed in finance is the fact that often there is incomplete or misleading information as to how the firm is operating with that we have what's referred to as informational asymmetry or information asymmetry. Information asymmetry means that, that uh, there is uneven information. Managers are corporate insiders, stockholders are on the outside and so the true affairs of the firm are not quite known by stockholders as intimately as, as uh, the corporate uh, managers know of uh, the information and so because managers know more than others they have the ability to manipulate information in such a way that um, those who rely on information to make prudent investment decisions being the stockholders become misled so this is a tendency in the modern corporation and I note here that examples of how information could be manipulated could for example be inflating a firm's reported earnings or attempting to hide a firm's debt um, capital. Why would the firm um, try to hide how much money it's borrowed? Well, so as to give the impression that the firm is uh, financially strong. So with um, such practices investors are likely to be misled and therefore might pay more than they should to purchase the firm's shares. And of course this is a type of moral hazard created by the firm's managers. And when things unravel, as was the case with uh, Enron, Global Crossings and um, what was that other company? Um, the, um, um, the, the, uh, the company that used to own uh, MCI in um, out of Mississippi and I'm just a little blank <laughs> you know on the name and it'll come back to me shortly but as in such cases uh, when things unravel 
uh, we find that there's uh, a dramatic fall in the stock price and there would be unwillingness on the part of creditors to lend money to the firm because um, they now know the truth that was hidden from them all the while. And in the modern corporation, a couple of ways um, by which stockholders um, are able to contain the incidence of uh, agency problem could uh, involve the use of uh, sticks and uh, carrots. Um, an example of a carrot is through incentive compensation. For example, if you do well for us, we'll pay you more. And so there would be some basis for ensuring uh, for determining whether management is actually doing well for the stockholders. Example could be based on the firm's overall performance. Performance could be based, for example, on the economic value added, and such uh, payments could be in the form of uh, cash bonuses, stock options, preemptive rights offerings, and so forth. Now, on the other hand, there could also be the threat of firing. Right? If you mess us, if you if you uh, expropriate our funds, stockholders might might say, we'll, um, we'll get rid of you. And so the threat of firing is a type of stick that can always be wielded by stockholders um, in the face of uh, likely um, uh, corporate malfeasance. Now then, um, corporate governance represents a set of rules, processes, checks, and balances that affect the way in which a corporation is administered. That's the concept. All right, so we're thinking of how a firm is being administered so as to generate value for its stockholders, for example. But corporate governance is actually all-embracing. It focuses on all of its stakeholders. Stakeholders include the stockholders or shareholders, if you like, the suppliers, the employees of the firm, customers of the company, government, and the community at large. Now, we always argue in finance that while we have all of these stakeholders, that the most important stakeholder is the stockholder because the stockholder owns the company. It is he or she that has risked capital and um, provide employment for employees, uh, products and services for customers, um, a source of tax revenue for government, and a thing of beauty in the community. And so, um, as a result, when all is said and done, the shareholders' value needs to be maximized to ensure that all of these benefits exist for the other stakeholders. Pursuant to the objectives of corporate governance, transparency in financial reporting is required by our securities law. And in fact, the pivotal, the original securities law establishing this is the Securities and Exchange Act of 1934, which established the, um, the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, as the chief police officer in the financial uh, markets. And I note here some of the major corporate scandals, including Enron, WorldCom is the company that I went blank on, Global Crossings, Fannie Mae, um, and what happened uh, regarding Bernard Madoff's uh, $50 billion fraud in 2008, and also the Bank of America bonus payments to Merrill Lynch bankers after the collapse of Merrill Lynch following the 2008 financial crisis, and this happened actually um, in 2009. And so, back in uh, the early 2000s, after the um, corporate malfeasance that arose um, with um, the bust of the high-tech bubble in 1999 and 2000, we had the uh, passage of the Sarbanes-Axley Act of 2002. It was in response to wide-ranging corporate abuses, and what it did was to outline measures that ensure not only independence on the part of the firm's board of directors, financial analysts and auditors, but also imposes personal responsibility on the part of corporate executives regarding the accuracy of the 
financial statements that they publish and so no more will corporate executives or any executive say hey I didn't really know that things were going bad it wasn't me that stole the money and I didn't really know that the other executive executives were stealing money so everybody at the top echelon of corporate affairs is held um, individually liable for anything that goes wrong in the corporation of course as you can see the Sorbens Axley Act didn't quite do it because of uh, what happened later in 2007 following the uh, collapse of the uh, housing market and the subsequent 2008 financial crisis so in response to that Congress passed the Restoring American Financial Stability Act of 2010 which I show you the picture here President Obama signed into law on July 21st 2010 and these are some members of, of Congress that were um, primarily responsible for the passage of uh, that bill which stipulates a number of provisions addressing consumer protection as well as um, investor protection and you can read through this um, for your personal enjoyment <laughs> and this concludes this segment of our lecture presentation next up we're going to discuss some of the basic metrics that are used to evaluate performance and they include the basic rate of return interest rates time value of money analysis etc